Sorry to bother you, old chap. I'm wondering if you could send up a few of your fighter pilots. The Fritz are being an awful nuisance shooting down our boys. Yes. Jolly good chap. The First World War revolutionised warfare, permanently transforming the way we fight, and none more so than with these. Pilots became the new, handsome, dashing knights of the air, and in this video I'm going to be looking at three badass First World War pilots from Yorkshire. So let's look at this part of Yorkshire's hidden history. Churches, battles, kings and queens, factories and big machines, castles, forts and in-betweens, the stories that I told. The first guy is one with the epic name of Woolston Tempest, and that was his real name. He'd already served in the King's Own Yorkshire Light Infantry at the Second Battle of Ypres and suffered gas damage. This was the first time the Germans had used chlorine gas on a large scale, and that too totally transformed warfare. After coming home to recuperate, he decided to join the Royal Flying Corps. Now, the Royal Flying Corps was the original Royal Air Force. It was created in 1912, and on the 1st of April 1918, it merged with the Royal Naval Air Service to become the Royal Air Force, which we know today. Wollstone's claim to fame is shooting down a Zeppelin. It wasn't the first to do it, but it did it nonetheless, and it's still pretty impressive. Now, Zeppelins were terrifying machines back then. I think in our modern times, we don't quite realise how terrifying the experience was. But let me take you back in time to the First World War. Britain had never before been a home front. In the vast majority of foreign wars, the soldiers went off to some far and distant land and did the fighting, and the family stayed at home and kept the home fires burning. And apart from the mild threat of invasion from France, they weren't in any danger, but for the first time, everyone was in danger from these great balloons of death in the sky, so it was utterly terrifying for people. Point being, anyone who could shoot down a Zeppelin was a hero. This is where Wilson comes in. Zeppelins had bombed British cities as early as January 1915, and so when he joined the Royal Flying Corps, he was assigned to a home defence squadron in Essex. And so, on one dark night in October 1916, he was patrolling the dark skies of London when he saw a Zeppelin. He zoomed towards it, dodging the anti-aircraft fire which filled the air and let rip a great burst of machine gun fire into the belly of the balloon. These were incendiary bullets. The British had realised that ordinary bullets couldn't do the job and he recalled seeing a soft glow start in the belly of the balloon like a Chinese lantern before the entire thing burst into flames. Now the crew were faced with a terrifying decision. Do you stay in the balloon and get burnt to death or jump out to almost certain death? Many jumped, none survived the crash, and Wollstone managed to get his plane out of the way just in time before the great fiery balloon crashed to the earth. Now, thousands were watching this spectacle in the night sky, and for this, Wollstone was awarded the Distinguished Service Order. He went on to become a bit of a pin-up hero and was featured in a postcard with other Zeppelin killers. He went on to have a highly successful and illustrious career in the First World War. The next pilot is the ace, literally, Ronald William Turner, who was born in York. He transferred from the Yorkshire Regiment to the RFC in December 1917. He was part of 20 Squadron, the most successful and highly decorated squadron on the Western Front. They accumulated a total of 613 combat victories, with over 40 aces, a Victoria Cross winner and over 60 other medals won. From May to July 1918, he shot down nine German planes as a gunner in a two-seater plane, including three in one day, and was later awarded the Distinguished Flying Cross. What is really impressive to me is the fact that the life expectancy of a new British pilot in 1918 was just three weeks, and so Turner was incredibly lucky and skilled to have survived so long and shot down so many in such a short space of time. Even more so, the mortality rate for the whole squadron during the war was 50%. And last but not least, we have a guy with the epic name of Ewan Rabagliati. He was born in Bradford, and his surname comes from his Italian ancestry. Like Wollstone, he started off life as an officer in the King's Own Yorkshire Light Infantry before becoming a pilot in 1914, and his claim to fame is that he was the first British pilot to shoot down an enemy aircraft in the First World War. His squadron had arrived in France just 10 days after Britain declared war on Germany. He went on to have an illustrious career in the First World War. It was mentioned in dispatches three times, awarded the Military Cross, the Air Force Cross, and even this French one, which I don't know how to pronounce. He even reached the rank of Lieutenant Colonel. What makes his life really exciting, though, is the amount of stuff he did afterwards. He was an amateur racing driver and even served in MI6 during the Second World War. That's all I've got time for today. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you've learnt something new.